Okay, this time we're going to demonstrate the uh, what we call the dumpy level. Very old uh, instrument. Uh, this instrument's been around for, I don't know, several hundred years maybe, in some manner or another. And this uh, takes a tripod that has a threaded top instead of the flat top tripod that we looked at earlier. So you have to take the cap off of that. And this instrument simply threads on. Now, one thing you've got to be aware of, the instrument is made out of brass mostly, but the tripod's cast aluminum. Two soft metals, so when you thread this on, if it doesn't thread on easily, it's cross-threaded, and so you don't want to force it because you'll damage the threads. And you thread this on until it stops. Do not over-torque it, but make sure that it is snug. Now then, this instrument is a little more difficult to level than uh, our modern instruments because it's a four screw leveling system. And some of the biggest mistakes I see with students that use this instrument is they don't have the proper tension on the leveling screws and consequently the instrument will wobble. See how this wobbles back and forth? And there's no possible way to hold level. So we need to make sure that the leveling screws are snug so that there's no wobble in the instrument. Now then, this has a very large straddle bubble, and unlike the auto level, this has no compensator or plunger button. Uh, this has a fixed crosshair. The advantages of fixed crosshair versus the auto level, which is typically a lot easier to use, is that if we're in a multi-story building or on a bridge deck or in a car garage that has live traffic vehicles or wind loads against the building, when we use an auto level that has a pendulum type compensator, the movement of the building is going to make the crosshairs bounce and move quite, quite a bit. If you were to view that, as that occurs for a long period of time, it could give you vertigo, it could actually give you a little nausea. So contractors still use the dumpy level because of its antique nature. It has no compensator, consequently the crosshairs are more stable on more live environments. So these instruments are still widely used. It has a very large straddle bubble, we call this a straddle bubble. Uh, this bubble uh, is extremely sensitive. It is uh, uh, very long, it's not cambered, it's a flat tube of glass filled with oil and the bubble is uh, very sensitive to getting it level. Now to get that level, I must place the straddle bubble in line with two opposite screws and simultaneously utilizing the left thumb rule, and I'll kind of get on this side a little bit, the left thumb rule states that whichever direction my left thumb goes, if it goes this direction, the bubble will go in the direction of my thumb. If I go this direction with the screw, the bubble will go this way. I want the bubble currently to go this direction. So I simultaneously, maintaining pressure, rotate both these screws in opposite directions. And you can see the bubble starts to move and it is very sensitive. Now then, the next thing, I want to get the instrument level on this axis. So I put the straddle bubble in line with this pair of opposite leveling screws. Again, employing the left thumb rule and maintaining pressure on the leveling screws uniformly so that it doesn't wobble. I get the instrument level in this axis. Now I've got to go back and check this direction because I've probably knocked it out of level some, but each amount, each time I turn this 90 degrees, I have less adjustments to make. So as you can tell, this is not near as easy as an auto level or a three screw leveling system. This one takes a little bit of setup, time and procedure. And I check back in this direction, 
I again check this direction. The bubble seems to be pretty stable. Now then, to ensure that the calibration of the straddle bubble is correct, I'm going to swing it to 180 degrees. I'm put it again in line with two of the leveling screws. And I'm going to see if the bubble agrees with itself. Now this bubble is off about two little tick marks. So I'm going to set it to where it's off one. And then when I swing it back at 180, it should be off one tick mark in the opposite direction. Now that's called splitting the difference on the bubble. So if the bubble's out by two marks, then I'm going to make it off by one mark so that when I swing it at 180, it reads off the same amount only in the opposite direction. Then I can assume that the bubble is level. I also need to do that in this axis. Make it off about one so that when I swing it 180, it gives me the same amount of out of level in both opposite directions. So now the instrument's level. We're ready to make an observation. Again, the ring on the eyepiece moves the eyepiece in and out, and that is my crosshair focus. Now, if I look through the instrument and I can't see anything, I've got to remember to take the lens cap off. Now when I look through the instrument, I can see something. And I'm going to twist the eyepiece ring until my crosshair is dark. And then I'm going to use the knob on top, which is my objective focus. for a rod reading. Again, this instrument operates um, differential leveling principles the same as the auto level. We have back sights from a known elevation to get a height of instrument, and then four sights to go from the height of instrument back down to the ground. Also with this, the rodman will use a rod you will have to wave it back and forth so that when it's in the back position, the rod's hypotenuse. When it's centered, it is perpendicular to the line of sight of instrument. When it's forward, it's a hypotenuse. So we want to read the lowest value. The crosshair will appear to climb the rod, go down, and appear to climb the rod again. Okay. So these instruments, even though they've been manufactured for some time, are probably, in this style, uh, rarely manufactured now. Uh, they do last quite a long time, and a lot of contractors still use them because of the uh, added advantage. It does not have the compensator, which in certain scenarios is an advantage. That's it for the dumpy.